Hey guys, it's Lee here. In this video, I wanted to go over how I made over $5,000 swing trading after pay shares, and how at one point I was down about $8,000 due to the Senate inquiry into financial services, which roped after pay into the picture. Now, if you're looking for a technical analysis of my trade, this isn't me. Big caveat, this isn't me and it isn't my style. I used to look at more of the analytics when I was into day trading. However, just due to my current work uh, situation, working full time in middle management, I've switched over to swing trading just because I don't have a lot of time to be spending looking at the data um, and where things are heading to, what the float is looking like or anything like that. So I really just focus on the businesses that I understand and that I can see having a short to mid term level of growth. And then at some point, take profit along the way. If you're looking for a technical analysis of day trading, I would definitely follow either Ricky Gutierrez over in the States or our Australian equivalent that I follow, Matt from The Millennial Investor. There are a few other channels, however, these are just the ones that I follow and in my opinion, they produce great content. And I think it's really important to understand that there's a huge risk in all this trade and whatnot. So I by no means am I any profit who understands how and where the market's gonna move. There's definitely huge risks in this and I'm just trying to take an educated risk based on my research as an investor. Now, before I go on with the numbers that might shock some of you guys out there, I just wanna give you guys a bit of context as to my situation. So I currently have an investment property down in the Gold Coast. It's next to a few of our theme parks up here in um, Queensland. I also have a year's to a year's and a half's worth of expenses covered in cash and a high interest savings account. And then I have my portfolio, which holds my dividend stocks. So all the money that I'm mentioning here now is literally play money or money that I'm willing to risk to get that growth and hopefully cash out. Although the risks I'm taking might shock some of you guys out there, for me, it's an educated risk that again, I'm willing to take and I've got everything that's covered on the back end and worst comes to worst, this becomes a capital loss that I can write off if to my gains in the future. So now to go on with what actually happened. So this is not actually the first time that I've traded after pay. Uh, my very first trade in the Australian stock market, which was late-ish last year, I'm quite late to the game relatively, was actually with Afterpay as well. So I entered into the share at $17.50. I bought a thousand shares. Then it had spiked up to $22.50. At this point, it was very, very difficult for me to cash out just because I just thought it was going to keep growing. Um, but eventually I did cash out at $22.50. So that was a $5,000 gain. Um, and as a, your, my first trade, you can imagine the rush that's going through my head. I feel like I'm, you know, the Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> oh. um, don't really know what to do with all this kind of money. And I was wondering if I could repeat this again and again and again, right? Like I thought I was smarter than the market figured out. Obviously, just all luck. And after my first lucky trade, I saw the shares dip down towards $19.60. And I went in again because I honestly believed in the company and figured that people were just locking in profits at this point. And although this stuff has happened within the market, this is obviously a typical rookie mistake, right? Um, but that's the beauty of hindsight. You don't really know what you don't know. Now, at this point, the shares continued to decline. I was a little bit worried, going to be honest with you, but I actually wasn't too phased just because I do see the value within the company and I wasn't a day trader. So I didn't constantly check up every single minute to see how the stock was doing. I probably checked maybe four times a day or something like that. Now, I know that not cutting my losses is a mistake that many traders get into, particularly if you're day trading, because you know, you're know you you're gonna keep losing, thinking that it's gonna go up at one point. But let's remember, this is a company that's continuing to provide a service that people were using and were expanding over the US. They generated insane growth, outgrowing the Australian revenue in a shorter amount of time. With all of this in mind, I understood that this was possibly people just continuing to take profits and a bit of fear that was being stirred within the market based on the news around credit and how bad that could be, especially around these buy now, pay later apps. I remembered also at this point to reassure myself, I actually went around asking friends and colleagues if they were still using Afterpay. And although the news was sprucing negative comments and messages, I had people from 14 to 43 who loved Afterpay and had nothing negative to say about the product. Then all hell broke loose. The news hit that the Senate inquiry was gonna be looking into the buy now and pay later companies. I remember at this time, this news got out while I was at work and I didn't even see until I left the office. Freaking out and obviously going, what the fuck? How did the APT fall by 15% in one day? I saw that the Senate was looking into the stock. I think at this point it dropped to about $14 and I honestly was sitting there wondering why. 
why people are so scared. I mean, let's remember their business model. They take the lowest rates on everything that they're basically charging the client. At the time, there was a late fee of just $10 and they make most of their monies off the percentages that they were charging the merchants. And if you actually had read the reports, they were always constantly looking at reducing the number of late fees to boost the confidence of their customers. Now, if you really didn't believe in the company at this point, you would have easily sold to reduce your losses, right? Which is why it's so crucial to understand the businesses that you're investing in or swing trading in so you can become unshakable when this black swan events or news comes out. Luckily and reassuringly, during this event, uh, Matt from The Millennial Investor also uploaded a video on the event and analyzed why this was an overreaction and thanks so much, bud. Um, you really reassured me when I watched this video and it gave me a bit more peace of mind going through this rough patch. But the stock continued to slide down and there was a lot of fear around it, not having any conclusions or results and pending a final result from the Senate to see what they'd actually impose. The stock kept sliding down for a month or two at this point and I didn't really care because I could see the market was volatile because 20 to 30% of our market share is made up of financial services all being questioned, so there was a huge decline in the market overall. Now with the news coming that the buy now and pay later companies, in particular Zip and Afterpay, were being cleared of the Senate review, the stock prices started to rise steadily. And to be honest, after their quarterly report in February, I expected some more serious gains to steady the share price given their continued growth in the US and their updates to expand in the UK, which I sat in the conference call in. But that didn't happen. What did happen though was that the price of the share just slowly slowly started to grow and some days it would hit 10 percent and 12 percent without any news or updates from the company now from my understanding in the share market is that that's generally some of the bigger players moving their money from companies that are growing as well and putting it into afterpay where they see potential growth going towards because the stock market and a capitalist economy is always just a transfer of wealth it's not a creation of wealth itself it's literally just being transferred from one company to another from one business to another and as the prices kept going up i kept seeing interviews with some of their big fund managers in australia putting apt as a buy just because they saw a massive potential for growth in afterpay with their expansion over in the us and the uk now if you want to see any of these videos that i'm referring to from these big fund managers uh just youtube livewire uh they have a lot of interviews with a lot of the managers from these large funds and again a lot of the videos refer back to afterpay uh, because it's one of the most talked about shares in the Australian tech industry at the moment. And in early April, we can see that it's slowly starting to hit the $23 mark where it last plateaued in late 2018. So obviously I had thoughts of selling out and making around two to $3,000 profit uh, with all my 1,000 afterpay shares. And on a quiet day where I had no meetings to attend to or any of that, I was actually watching the share prices and I was waiting for it to actually hit 25. It went over $25 a share. After that, I had put in a conditional order and thought that this growth is just unsustainable. It's been uptrending from $12 all the way to $25. And if anybody's seen that before in the stock market, like, like any marijuana stock in North America, it peaks up to a point due to just speculation then it just comes down because people are taking out their profits and whatnot. So I sold my shares at $25.20, making a profit of $5,600, obviously minusing any brokerage fees. And with Self Wealth, that was $9 a trade. With the profits, I'm looking to put my money elsewhere. Um, so I'm currently looking around in the stock market to see where there's an opportunity. Zip is a stock that I am looking at, just given its low price um, and its likelihood to actually rise uh, with an upward trend in the buy now pay later space. But I think throughout this whole journey, it's important to note that you swing trade or invest in companies that you have competency in and can see growth within two to three years. The worst thing you can do is invest into something because somebody told you to invest into it. Like if I told you to buy afterpay stocks now and it continues to trend down below $19, you know, you'd lose a lot of money and sell out as quickly as possible just because you're not too confident in the stock that you're investing in. So that, yep, that's it for me guys. Ended up buying myself a nice new jacket for winter uh, for writing that crazy, crazy Senate inquiry madness. Comment below, let me know what you thought of the video. Let me know what you guys are looking at, some 
uh, stocks that I could possibly put my money into um, in the comment below. I'd love to see what everybody is looking at in the ASX and just getting to know more people in the community. I hope some of you can relate to my journey and the emotional roller coaster that is the share market. And understand again, I'm no god, I have no foresight in some of this. I was literally prepared to lose if worse came to worse and just make it a capital loss in the future. But again, it's me understanding after pay. It's me doing a bit of market research amongst my friends and colleagues um, and seeing that the product actually works and that people use it and it is beneficial for a lot of people who do want to purchase things. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.